And the first order of business is roll call. Ms. Hopper, please. Ms. Hopper? Uh, can you hear Matt? Can you hear Ms. Hopper? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, roll call, please. Henry Jones. Uh, here. Rob Techner. Good morning. Frank Racino for Fiona Moss. Good morning. Lisa Middleton. Good morning. Stacey Olivares. Good morning. Irena Ortega. I, I just added Irena to the meeting. Irena Ortega. I'm here. Thank you. Jason Perez. Here. Okay. Thank okay. Thank you, Ms. Hopper. The next item on the agenda is the election of the uh, board uh, governance uh, committee chair and vice chair. And for the chair, I will turn the gavel over to Mr. Fechner. Mr. Fechner, please. Thank you, Mr. Jones. So I'm now opening the floor for nominations for the office of chair of the board governance committee. Are there any nominations for the office of chair? Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to move to, a, to, I would like to nominate Henry Jones as the uh, committee chair. Thank you, Mr. Rafino. We have Mr. Jones nominated as chair of the board governor's committee. Are there any further nominations for the office of chair? Are there any further nominations for the office of committee chair? Third and final time, any further nominations of the Office of Chair of the Board Governance Committee? Seeing none, I'll accept the motion to uh, elect Mr. Jones as Chair of the Board Governance Committee. So move. And moved by Second. Mr. Rafino. Who, who moved? Mr. Miller? Ms. Middleton, I believe it was. Oh, Ms. Middleton, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Middleton made the motion. Mr. Rafino seconded the motion. Uh, Ms. Hopper, please call the roll. Rob Fechner? Aye. Frank Rufino for Fiona Ma. Aye. Lisa Milton? Aye. Stacey Oliveris? Aye. Irena Ortega? Aye. Jason Perez? You're muted. Yeah, all right, Mr. Chair, you have all votes, aye. Thank you, appreciate that, Ms. Hopper. Congratulations, Mr. Jones, you've been elected chair of the Board Governors Committee. The floor is back to you. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Fechner, and thank you committee members for uh, confidence to allow me to serve as the chair for another year. At this time, I'll open the floor up for nomination for the vice chair of the board governance committee. Are there any nominations? Uh, let me see the chat box just a second if you. Is there not? Just a second. Oh. Is there a nomination for? Uh, Vice Chair of the Board Governance Committee. Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Ms. Middleton. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fechner. Mrs. Middleton has been nominated for Vice Chair of the Board Governance Committee. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? For the third time, are there any further nominations? Since there are no further nominations, I'd like to entertain a motion to elect Ms. Milton as vice chair of the Board Governance Committee. Motion so moved. Moved by Mr. Fruin. I second. 
Farina, and second by Ms. Olivares. All those in favor, Mrs. Hopper, would you call the roll, please? Sure, Mr. Chair, can you clarify who moved the motion? It was uh, moved by Mr. Fechner and second by Ms. Olivares. I did not make the motion. Uh, oh. Mr. Rufino, Mr. Rufino made the, the motion, uh, Ms. Hopper. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay, okay, Rob Beckner. Aye. Frank Rufino for Fiona Moss. Aye. Lisa Middleton. Aye. Stacey Oliveris. Aye. Irena Ortega. Aye. Jason Perez. Aye. And with that, Mr. Chair, we have Frank Rufino making the motion and Stacey um, seconding it. Okay, thank you. thank you and congratulations, uh, Ms. Milton, on your election. Thank you all and I look for, I appreciate your confidence and look forward to working with each one of you. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the board's governor's timed agenda. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Uh, who's that? Me, Mr. Perez. Oh, okay, moved by Mr. Perez. Do we have a I'll second? second. Second, second. By, second by Mr. Fechner. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. Hopper. Rob Fechner. Aye. Frank Rufino for Fiona Ma. Aye. Lisa Middleton. Aye. Stacy Oliveris. Aye. Irena Ortega. Arena? Shows that she's not muted. Arena Ortega? There she is. Arena Ortega. Bye. More time, Irena Ortega. Ms. Hopper, uh, looks like Ms. Ortega has the uh, yellow diamond, uh, the yellow triangle, and that. so she's having difficulty connecting. So perhaps one of the tech team members could reach okay. out to her. Thank you. Mr. Chair, thank you, Marcy. Mr. Chair, I have Jason Perez moving that motion, moving that item, and Rob, I believe, second it. Yes. Correct. I did. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we would now move on to the next item on the agenda is executive report, Mr. Jacobs. Yes. Good morning, uh, Chair Jones, Vice Chair Middleton, and other committee members and board members. I'm pleased to report that we have our first live audience uh, in the auditorium of the, of the week today. Uh, Mr. Al Darby has joined us in the audience, so happy about that. Got a little company. Uh, okay. Social distancing is being observed. Beyond that, I have a synopsis of today's agenda. There are two action items. Uh, 7A presents the question whether to postpone the 2020 board self-assessment that would ordinarily be required by the board governance policy until uh, 2021 in light of the continuing implementation of the 2018 board self-assessment work. Uh, item 7B brings forward a second draft of the code of conduct. Uh, Matt, can you speak up? Yeah, I'll, I'll shout. How about that? <laughs> That's good. Um, I've been trying to shout, but let, let's uh, take it up another notch. Uh, 7B <laughs> brings forward a second draft of the code of conduct for the committee's review and approval. There are also two information items. Uh, 8A is an update on the insight tool 
and then 8B compares CalPERS's approach to handling allegations of harassment against board members to the legislature's approach to handling the same such allegations by legislators. Uh, that concludes my executive report, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Jacobs. Uh, we will now go to the action consent item, uh, approval of the November uh, Board Governance Committee meeting minutes and, and the Board Co Governance Committee delegation. Do I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Uh, moved by Mr. Fechner, second by Ms. Oliveras. All those, oh, Ms. Hopper, please. Yes, one moment, Mr. Chair. Rob Fechner. Aye. Frank Racino for Fiona Ma. Aye. Lisa Middleton. Aye. Stacey Oliveras. Aye. Arena Ortega. And Still working on it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Jason Perez, please. Aye. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Ms. Hopper. Uh, the next item on the agenda is information consent items, and I've received no request in my chat box here to pull anything off. So uh, we will now move on to the uh, next item, which is uh, action item, agenda item 7A. Uh, which is approved schedule change for board self evaluation. Ms. Simpson. Thank you, Chair Jones and committee members. Um, as you'll see from this item, we are uh, putting forward the notion that the board self evaluation for 2020 be moved to 2021. And the reason for this is that the board is still overseeing the implementation of some significant reforms that were arising from the board self-evaluation that took place most recently. Um, we also have another consideration, which is the tremendous amount of um, other work going on by nature of the pandemic that's uh, being managed. But the real reason for this suggestion to postpone to next year is so that the evaluation um, that the board undertakes next can reflect on and consider the impact of the reforms that are still being implemented. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any uh, questions, comments from committee members? Uh, seeing none in the chat box. So this is a uh, action item. So do we have a motion? So moved. Moved by, moved by Mr. Fechner and second by whom? Ms. Ms. Middleton. Ms. Middleton. Okay, moved by Mr. Fechner and second by Ms. Middleton. <clears throat> uh, Ms. Hopper, please. Rob Fechner. Aye. Frank Rafino for Fiona Ma. Aye. Lisa Middleton. Aye. Stacey Oliveras. Aye. Serena Ortega. Aye. And Jason Perez. Aye. And Mr. Chair, we have Rob Fechner making the motion and Lisa Middleton second. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hopper. The item passes. <clears throat> We will now move on to item uh, 7B, uh, work stream number four update, code of conduct. Ms. Simpson. Thank you, Chair Jones. This item presents a new draft of the proposed code of conduct, which was one of the recommendations which came out of the board's self-evaluation, which we just mentioned. This was facilitated by the National Association of Corporate Directors. There was a substantial discussion on an earlier draft, and this new edition is intended to reflect the main advice. The first was that we make sure that this proposed code of conduct for the board to adopt for its own membership does not duplicate other policies. We want to make sure that it's uh, clean, and well connected to all existing other policies and advice that the board has adopted. Um, 
The purpose of today's discussion is to review the new draft, uh, to take any further advice and direction, and to consider approval if this new addition meets the committee's expectations. And if it doesn't, then we'll keep the work going and come back again. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Simpson. Uh, are there any questions from committee members or comments? Okay, seeing none in my chat box. So I would, this is a uh, action item. And I just, first of all, before we take a, a motion and a vote, I'd just like to thank Mr. Fechner and Ms. Perez for all their fine work on getting us to the stage. I know it's been a long and arduous uh, process, but eventually we got to where we are today. So I wanna just thank those two committee members for the work. So with that, uh, Ms. Uh, Hopper, would you please call? Oh, we need a motion first. Can I have a motion? I so move. Okay, Mr. Rufino. Second. Who was that? Ortega. Okay, Ms. Ortega, second. Ms. Hopper, please. Rob Fechner. Aye. Frank Rufino for Fiona Ma. Aye. Lisa Milton. Aye. Stacey Oliveris. Aye. Arena Ortega. Aye. Jason Perez. Aye. And Mr. Chair, I have Frank Rufino making the motion and Arena seconding it. Okay, thank you. That is correct. Thank you, Ms. Hopper. So the item passes. <clears throat> now we will move to um, information items. And this is the board work stream five update. And we have Ms. Simpson and Mr. Taylor. And I do have a note that uh, when you complete your presentation, we do have a request from the public, I believe Ms. Hopper to speak on this item. Is that correct? Yes, we do Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Simpson, you can go for it. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm joined today by Tim Taylor. He is our Chief Technology Innovation Officer. And today we want to give you an update on progress with the new Insight tool that's being developed. The importance of this new platform that's being built for the board and its committees is to improve the flow of information in a timely manner. Also, to, this will help the board um, improve its oversight function, which is so important. And it will also allow board and committee members to search through the archives and history of decisions and supporting material. So this is going to, we hope, also save time and allow board members to be able to see the history and the context as complex decisions are being brought forward for their review and consideration. Um, with that, let me hand over to Tim Taylor so that he can speak to the attachment to this item, which gives you a glimpse of the items and issues that will be contained in the investment committee uh, sections of the new Insight tool. That will relate to the boards and the committee's oversight responsibilities. So the example that you have before you looks at how in real time uh, this tool will enable you to track um, important elements such as asset allocation, risk measures like volatility and tracking error, liquidity coverage, which is so important, and of course policy exceptions. And having this split for the uh, for the PERF and also for the affiliate funds. So with that, let me um, hand over to Tim Taylor, who's leading this project with input and discussion from the board. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you so much. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to give an update. We are in the process of finalizing the few remaining details for our spring release. 
uh, as we have briefed previously. We are planning to do quarterly seasonal major releases of functionality to provide uh, a ever improving uh, tool for you to use. In this upcoming release of notes, uh, we'll be implementing two-factor authentication. Basically, this will be implemented from an optional standpoint to begin with, but then as we begin to uh, provide closed items via this platform, it will become a mandatory uh, requirement for users in order to see those. Uh, you'll basically uh, use a soft token on a, a personal device or a mobile phone, and that will be a second key for you to authorize into the system. Uh, we also have been curating uh, important resources out of the, the current solution. We've been moving those into Insight so we can start to focus your attention in that regard. The curated resources are going to be more streamlined than what you're accustomed to. Uh, it'll only be those items that don't or have not been presented as a, an, an agenda item before. Currently, you'll see a lot of presentations and whatnot in the resource center but we've provided an enhanced search capability for you to be able to retrieve those more quickly than you would sifting through a uh, voluminous resource center. Uh, another item of interest is we have implemented Trek, which is our travel request and expense claim system. And that will allow uh, folks when uh, to seek approval for travel, work with BSU and getting the details solidified. And then upon completion of the travel, be able to electronically submit your travel expense claim. And as additionally, as uh, Anne had mentioned, we've rebranded the vital science section. Uh, you currently have insight to a few, few metrics of interest currently. Uh, what we've developed now is a dedicated panel for investments to begin with, where we do showcase uh, various health indicators for the 11 funds as they pertain to uh, policy weight variances, and then also uh, an interactive you into the in market value for each of those funds. And you can see individual asset information as well. And it's designed to be a quick reference point to determine whether or not a particular policy variance, for example, or a particular fund is, is healthy or green or is approaching uh, the policy variance threshold, at which point it's yellow, or if it's out of compliance with that policy variance, then it would be red. Uh, you'd be able to see all 11 funds very easily from one view, and then you have the ability to click through and get the detailed information for that. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out is this is information, by and large, that you typically do receive now as an agenda item. You had just received it, um, I believe, item 8C, attachment 1. It's the performance and risk quarterly report. But with the Insight platform, this is something that will be delivered to you monthly. Um, and it'll be pushed to you and it won't require uh, an agenda item in a meeting in order for you to, to see that information. So there's uh, some insight into what we're doing there. Um, we'll also be implementing uh, policy exceptions, not just the policy weight variance exceptions for investments, but uh, some of the key policy exceptions that might emerge during the reporting period, um, as well as liquidity coverage and forecast volatility and tracking for the perf. So thank you. Are there any questions? We've uh, lost the chair. So perhaps uh, Ms. Middleton, until we get Henry back online, if you could coordinate the Q&A. All right. 